Human beings are animals, and animals are the most amazing beings in our universe. They rejoice and play, they nurture their own young, and they mourn their dead. They develop deep bonds, sometimes even with animals of other species, as dogs do with humans. Many solve complex problems and act with a sophistication, skill, and intelligence that undercuts the caricature of animals as mere brutes. Love animals, instructs Father Zosima in Dostoevsky's Brothers Karamazov. God has given them the rudiments of thought and joy untroubled. Don't deprive them of their happiness. Don't work against God's intent. But do the science of the animal kingdom and the theology of creation meet? The answer lies in communication. Animals form systems of communication on the basis of sensory experience. Hoots, grunts, growls, songs and dances, science has discovered, help animals coordinate in regards to what we might call sensual meanings, food, danger, sex, or sleep. Animals learn these signals through play. Rituals, gestures, vocal signals, and imitation. In 1936, the Catholic philosopher Charles de Koning anticipated 21st century biology when he wrote that it was almost certainly play among higher primates, the most social of all animals, that honed the neural groundwork for human reason. But there is a crucial difference when it comes to humans. Animal communication becomes language. Sometime between one and 200,000 years ago, within the species of Homo sapiens, a great change occurred. So radical was this change that scientists have called it a revolution, a great leap forward, even a spiritual transformation. Thanks to comparative linguistics, we know that all human languages seem to point to an original single language just as the human genome points to a common human ancestry. The patterns of our genetics and linguistics are deeply similar, and they both point to Africa. What happened there? Somewhere, at some point, mere signals became symbols and sounds became language, an entire network of symbols. This network allowed us to interpret subjective experience in an objective way. As animals, we remain tied to sensual meanings, but through language, we transcend them. We know the world in ourselves in a qualitatively different way beyond our biological needs and the environment that provides for them. Language changed what it meant to be an animal for our species. Animals make judgments. The human animal makes judgments about his or her judgments. Animals know things. We know that we know. In short, Language expresses reason in its user. Hence, we call the human animal a rational animal. As rational animals, human beings can understand a thing, indeed anything, from countless perspectives. Consider a lion. The giraffe knows the lion as a threat but we know the lion as a threat, as a collection of organic compounds, as a symbol of royalty, as a mammal, as maned in males and maneless in females, as threatened with extinction, the list goes on and on. 
Language allows us to understand all meanings, including those beyond our own environment. Even the distance of our planet from Alpha Centauri and the first moments of the expansion of the universe are open to human reason. The Catholic novelist Walker Percy, whose study of language was inspired by his own daughter's deafness, put it memorably. The signal-using organism has an environment, he wrote. A language user has an environment, but it also has a world. That world is segmented and named by language. Even the gaps in knowledge are named by the word gaps. The world of the language user is a totality. In this totality, human freedom, human rational choosing, transcends animal willing. The Dominican theologian Herbert McCabe offers the example of a juicy steak. When a healthy and hungry dog is presented with the steak, it will interpret it with the senses, desire it, and eat it. The non-human animal's nervous system gives it reasons for acting, but it does not possess those reasons. Those reasons possess it. But when we, equally healthy and hungry, are presented with the same steak, we will share a version of the dog's interpretation and maybe even its desire for it. But through language, we can then decide to eat it or not. We can reason that it belongs to someone else, is too full of cholesterol, or is too expensive. With the right neural complexity and manual dexterity, a non-linguistic animal might even make a tool to help procure steaks. Like the hand axes that our evolutionary forebears began making 1.8 million years ago and start fires to cook them, as they also did. But it will not come to a decision. Language users stand apart. We move ourselves in a more radical way than any other animal. And we can even choose against desires. We carry within us all that animal evolution provided. And it is the rich trove from which so much of what it means to be human is drawn but we carry it all in a new way. Language is not reducible to mere communication, and it offers a path of truth and love, or lies and loneliness, whichever we freely choose. This thinking and choosing rational animal can also pose the ultimate question. Is this world the creation of a higher rationality? Is there a God? From the 70,000-year-old ritual artifacts found in Rhino Cave in Botswana, to the many church buildings on a drive through any city today, the search for an answer has been around as long as language and reason have made it possible. Even as more rational animals deny the reality of God, they continue using language about Him. To be a speaker is to be a speaker about God. It is here where science and theology meet. Our Christian faith offers us a word, an article of language, that can show both the connection and the difference between animals and humans. It is the Hebrew word, Amen, which means, so be it. Animals display a kind of amen by acting according to their natures. They act, in Father Zosima's words, according to God's intent. But in human beings, 
the linguistic, rational animal, we discover a unique set of voices among the barks, roars, hoots, and bird songs that reverberate throughout the animal kingdom. Only one creature on our planet can say amen to God freely and with understanding in the way God says amen to the universe. That creature is the human person, made in the image of God, who can speak, understand, and offer thanksgiving in worship to the Creator of all.